everybody, welcome to Four Way Quidditch. It's like regular Quidditch, but spicier, because there's four of you. Back to you, Alex. <laughs> so as you can see on the field, we have five bludgers instead of the usual three, two quaffles instead of the usual one, and two snitches instead of the usual one. Most of the rules with four-way Quidditch are pretty much exactly the same as regular Quidditch, with a few differences. When you are moving, instead of using 3d6 for movement, you will actually be rolling 4d8. You move four characters at a time instead of three. Shooting on the hoops is a little bit different in four-way Quidditch. If the goal is successful, so if Richie here is shooting, with a successful goal, all opposing chasers in that team's quadrant that was just scored on, they will move directly back to the nearest half line half lines being these vertical or horizontal lines. So in this case, because Hufflepuff was scored on, so any Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, or Slytherin chasers move back. So Gilderoy will go back. Richie will go back. He'll move off to the side here. Uh, Mundungus will move back. Michael's already at the half line up there. And Drehead will back. Now, anyone who has a ball will move back with the ball, except for the ball that was obviously just scored. Now, beaters are not affected by this, so they do not have to move. What about the ball? Wow, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> when there's a shot on hoops, regardless of whether it results in a successful goal or not, a d20 and a d8 will be rolled. This will determine the position that the quaffle that was just scored will be placed. So 13 and 6 would be here. Now, if the goal was unsuccessful, so it missed, the ball just lands there. The team that just attempted the shot cannot go and pick it up or stand on it on that turn. However, if the goal was successful, it resulted in Ravenclaw in this case, they scored. Then what would happen now is the ball lands there and whichever chaser on Hufflepuff's team is closest to the quaffle, which would be our boy Colonoscopy, he would go and just get placed on the same spot as the Quaffle. He is immune to being tackled. The team who just scored cannot take the ball back right away. So whenever a character is beat or otherwise falls off their broom, if there's a straight line back to their hoops, they move directly back. In the case down here, we have Katie Bell about to beat Hagrid. So Hagrid would be beat here. There is a straight line back to his hoop line. So we're just gonna send him all the way back there. Now, in the event that a character is beat and there is not a straight line back, so for example, over here we have Mundungus, who might be beaten by Mrs. Norris. Okay, well, Mundungus critically fails. So, what would happen here is we actually draw a straight line back to the nearest half line. So, we look at this line here. Mundungus would be first bumped back to here, and now that he's here, there is a straight line back to his hoops. So, then we would go back and he would end up there. The Snitches and Seekers begin their play at the end of round one. Both Snitches will move at the same time, but this takes place in between every other team's turn. So two teams will move, then the Snitches, then two, the other two teams will move, and then the Snitches again, and so on and so forth throughout the rest of the game. The Snitch will roll two D12s. Each D12 will be used to move a different Snitch at the same time. But one Snitch will move five spaces, while the other Snitch will move nine spaces. The snitch does not tire out like it normally does in regular Quidditch. However, once the first snitch is caught, then the other snitch will be subtracting two for all movement. Now the seeker will move at the end of the turn. Uh, however, they will be rolling a d8. Now it is back to Slytherin's turn. They are moving their seeker. Pokey attempts a grab. We just count number of rounds past, which is four. It goes up again to a maximum of five like regular Quidditch. And Hokey will add the one for accuracy. So Hokey is adding uh, five overall. And Hokey grab. successfully grabs the snitch. Now, this is the first snitch grab. So what happens is this snitch is removed from the game. Hokey earns 30 points for Slytherin. And Hokey is also removed from the game. The game continues. Slytherin still plays. Slytherin is able to score more goals. The game just continues until the second snitch is caught. Thanks for watching. Feel free to read the rules because now there's more people to cyber bully you when you don't read the rules. So <laughs> don't let that happen.